So today I'm going to share with you how to put together a monoline badge inside of Illustrator. This was something that started out for me as just a little warm up piece. I was going to post it on Instagram as a bit of self promotion and I got really carried away. I went right down the rabbit hole, developed a whole series of badges, developed a fake brewery, mocked up a whole bunch of these sorts of things in real world examples to show you what they look like. And obviously I'm making this video sharing how I made all of this. So I got carried away, but hopefully you'll get something out of it. I'm going to share a lot of tips and techniques and key commands and things that you should be able to add to your workflow. So without wasting any more time, let's jump into Illustrator and build one of these badges. Okay, here I am in Illustrator. I've got just the basic square canvas set up. You can make your document whatever size or format you'd like. But for this demonstration, I'm going to start with a square. The first thing I'm going to do, and this is force of habit, maybe there's a quicker way to do it, but I always create a rectangle, or in this case a square, that matches the size of the canvas. So I find the corner, and this is using the rectangle tool. I press M on the keyboard to pull that up, and I create something that is the exact same size as my, can as my canvas and centered. So I know that the center point of the shape is actually the center point of the canvas. Then dragging out guides from the rulers, command R to pull the rulers up if you don't have them. I'm gonna drag out a horizontal and a vertical guide. And then I'm just gonna delete the background shape because we don't actually need it for this exercise. So if you saw the thumbnail, we're gonna create a badge that looks something like the series and for most of these, I didn't use any kind of sketches or reference images. Obviously, some of them are more complicated, and I did use reference Im reference image, but for this anvil that we're gonna to create today, I just kind of freestyled with the pen tool and some shape elements. So to start with, we're gonna work on the opposite side of one of the guides here, and we're just gonna pull up the pen tool, and we're going to click, hold down shift, and then roughly I'm going to create an angle about here, hold down shift again, and then come back over to the center point. So this is going to be the base of the anvil. Um, deselect it with command shift A. I want to finish off the bottom point. So because I deselected it, I let go of the original path. I can use the pen tool still. Wait till we get the minus option here and that picks up this piece. And we're going to just finish off the base there. Command shift A to deselect it as well. So now we're gonna pick up the path and we're gonna reflect it across the center part of the guide. Make sure you were aligned. So in outline mode, you can see this command Y to pull that up. If your path was not perfectly lined up with the guide, then reflecting across the guide is gonna leave a gap or vice versa, there might be an overhang if you were too far on the other side. So just make sure your points are neatly aligned to the center guide there. I've got my smart guides on, command U, and that's what creates all these little hover prompts. And it's just, I find it helpful to visualize where everything is and make sure that I'm aligned. So here's the base of our anvil. We're gonna select it. We're gonna hit O to pull up the reflect tool. And then we're gonna option click on this anchor point, which is also, like I said, aligned with the center guide. We're gonna create a copy across the vertical axis by pressing the copy button. Now, with both of these shapes selected, we can go to our Pathfinder palette and unite them, which will just merge them together and create one shape if they were properly aligned. If there was a gap, then they're not going to merge into this one single path. So that's looking pretty good. That's the base of our anvil. Now we're gonna to start to create the details up top. So press M on the keyboard to pull up the rectangle tool. And we're gonna create a long, thin rectangle that overhangs further than the base. That's kind of the tail of the anvil. And then we're gonna to align to that. So we find that anchor point and we're gonna create a little bit thicker rectangle that doesn't go out as far, maybe only to the width of the base there. This is gonna to start to become the nose. But like I said, it's deeper down like that. This is typically from what I could see, photos of vintage anvils, what they were proportioned like. 
Command Shift A to deselect that path. We still have a rectangle tool up on the keyboard, which is M, key command for that. And from the bottom point there, we're just gonna start to create a detail here on the front. I don't know what you would call it, maybe like neck of the anvil. And then we're gonna do that again and create the nose out to about here. So we've got all these shapes. We're gonna to start to manipulate them and stylize them into our anvil. So press A on the keyboard to pull up your direct selection arrow. And that allows you to pick up individual points or sections of paths with your regular selection tool, V on the keyboard to pull that up. If you click even specifically on a point, you technically select the whole path and all of the points that are associated with it. Same thing with groups. If all of these objects were grouped together, like this for instance, and you, so, and you click on this, it picks up the whole group. If you're using your direct selection tool and you click on a point, it literally only picks up that point even though it's part of a larger path and part of a larger group. So just handy to know. Let's ungroup this all, Command Shift G, because we don't need it grouped, and go back to the direct selection tool, A on the keyboard, just to pick up this bottom point here. We're gonna hold Shift to slide, to constrain the slide of this point, and we're gonna angle it into about there. With it still selected in the newer versions of Illustrator, I think it's the Creative Cloud versions, you get these cool rounding handles which allow you to add a radius to a point. So let's drag it out to here. If you go all the way to the end, you'll see that the line turns red and that's because you've reached the outer limit of how far you can add a radius because the radius itself starts to overlap with the next point along the path. So Generally speaking, you don't want to go this far because what ends up happening is that two points are completely overlapped and it can start to affect your illustration down the line. But let's let's come back into about there. So you can see that new point is created on the outer end of the radius and there is enough of a path in between that they're not overlapping. Let's finish this look off by selecting this front point and rounding off the nose of the anvil. So back into preview mode, and you can see that that's starting to look pretty nice. I had this color palette and stroke size selected earlier because that was what I was working with, and Illustrator defaulted back to it. You can pick any stroke um, color and size that's appropriate to your project, but the neat thing when you create a bunch of these badges is having all of the strokes consistent in size and color and weight and everything because then it creates a really cool series where everything feels very uniform and consistent. If there was a lot of varying line weights and colors, you wouldn't get the same effect in your, in your series. So this is just what is defaulted to for me. You can pick anything you'd like, obviously. It's up to you. Let's round off the front corner of this piece here. And then we're gonna round off the front and back corners of the anvil there, just very slightly. The back tail we wanna round off a little bit further, so it looks about there. Now, these joins you want to be able to round off, but when the paths are not together, when they haven't been merged, you're not gonna be able to select and merge those points just yet. Uh, but let's take care of that now. So back to the move tool. Let's pick up both of these or three of these elements here and using the Pathfinder again. If you didn't have that active yet, you can find it in Window Pathfinder because sometimes you might have it docked somewhere else. But for me, I have it down here in this toolbar. And then with those elements selected, let's unite them. Now that allows you to select these intersect points here and round those off. We're also going to round off the base to about there and then just put a tiny little radius on those points. Now I like the way that that's looking. The next thing I did in my original draft was just to kind of add some detail to the footing. So we just use the pen tool, P on the keyboard, create a stroke. When you create a stroke like this and you're using the pen tool, the last point that you click 
will remain active and you can see that there's a ghost of where your next click would create a path. If you want to drop the path, just use Command Shift A to deselect. Now, we still have the pen tool selected. Let's work towards our center point here. Coming across, again, we're just adding more detail to the footing. I'm holding down Shift to constrain this path on a 45, and then Shift to hold it, to constrain it onto a straight path, and we're gonna click on the guide. Deselect. Use the regular selection tool, V on the keyboard. Select this path, press O, and we're gonna reflect it across the middle again, and we're gonna create a copy. Now these two elements are separate. If you would like to join them, you don't have to, but if you would like to, press A on the keyboard to pull up your white arrow again that I've been talking about this whole video, the direct selection arrow, and click and hold down and drag over these two points. So these are the two endpoints of those two separate paths and press Command J to join them together. And now that path has been joined, whereas originally, I just undid that, they were two separate elements. So it can be handy to, like I said, grab both of those points and join them together. And then that way, this path won't become broken apart. It's all up to you based on your workflow, but throwing in that tip there. So now we're gonna pick this up again. I'm just using the regular selection tool this time to show you what happens. When you press A, you now have all of the points selected. The endpoints aren't possible. It's not possible to add a radius to them because they don't join to anything. But all of the points that were on this path that were selected now become available to add the radius to. There is a limit to that. I think if you have a very, very complicated path, there's only so many corners that you can add a radius to at one time. But generally speaking, for only a few points like this, not a problem to add it all at once. And there's our anvil. You can come in and adjust some of these characteristics. Like if you don't like how tall the anvil is, you can use the direct selection arrow. Find a section that is outside of all of the curves. Select just those points and you can drag them down to adjust the height. I think the anvil is also looking pretty stocky. So we're going to select this whole half here and shorten it up a bit. Just the word of warning here on this attempt that you're trying to, to make to move things in. Say if you end up selecting inside of a curve, you haven't selected all of the points to where it terminates on a straight and you drag in, whoop, like so, it's not gonna create the desired effect. So it's all about being strategic and trying to select points where everything that is curved or can be modified is all selected and the only thing you're doing is sliding in the points that were uh, terminating in a straight line. Like I did originally, we were adjusting the height, so vertically or horizontally. Okay, so here's our anvil. I made a couple minor adjustments to it. Your anvil is gonna look different, but it's our starting point for the rest of this badge. So I'm gonna pull up my polygon tool and I'm gonna create a hexagon up here. Now, I had a hexagon selected from my last time. If you say, use the polygon tool and it comes up with a triangle, don't worry, it's not broken. Get the tool tip for the polygon tool and just click once and in here you'll have a dialog box to select the number of sides. Obviously if you slide down to three and press okay, you get a triangle, six for a hexagon. So we're gonna delete that, we're gonna grab this hexagon, we're gonna rotate it. So we'll come up here to get the rotate function and we want the point to be aligned to the center, which it is. And let's scale this up to about now I'm going to delete the bottom point of this hexagon so we have something that looks like that I'm going to scale it up here another thing to note I'm going to go off on a tangent here I'm scaling things up and down if you do not have scale stroke and effects turned off this stroke would be getting thicker and thinner as you go up and down in size and that will ruin the look of the monoline 
badge. So if you want to know where that is, have a, an object selected, say object transform scale, and here's that option to scale stroke and effect. So if you turn it on and then you can cancel this transformation, but that option will stay. And you saw that that stroke got thinner. Let's turn it off so everything stays consistent and cancel the transformation. Um, the next thing that I'm going to go off on a tangent about is the feature offset path. So this shape here, I'm going to use it to create our badge. It is an open path. It is not closed. So there's an open space here. If I go and use the object path offset path feature to offset my path by a quarter of an inch here, if you preview it, you see what's happened is you get an offset path that goes in and out a quarter of an inch from your original path. That's not the effect that we want to go for here. So to simplify this process, let's close this path. Now we can say object path offset path. And by moving in that quarter of an inch there, the negative quarter of an inch, you can see that just the internal path has been created. Press OK. And then we can delete with our direct selection arrow or tool, just those bottom paths, not the whole shape. So let's select both of these, get them lined up to a spot that we like. And then I'm going to select these and line them up to the base of our anvil and these two paths here as well. Now I'm going to create a rectangle. So M on the keyboard to pull up that rectangle tool. I'm going to create a carrier here that's going to hold our text for our badge. That looks like that. And then in this space here where the anvil and the crest kind of intersect, I'm going to use the scissor tool. So press C to pull that up. And I'm just going to roughly cut around where I need. So all of those paths are cut. And then using the direct selection arrow, pick up both of these and then press delete twice to get rid of them. Now with the direct selection still selected, you can line these up to where they intersect with your anvil. So now that's kind of created some depth. The anvil has broken out. I like that effect. Now for this badge or crest area here, we're gonna add in some type. So you can pull up your text tool, T on the keyboard to get that and click. And by default, lorem ipsum comes up. And that's cool. I suppose for this example, I can just leave that up. I'm sure in the thumbnail, I'll come up with something else. Now, this text by default was black. I want this to be the same color as our anvil. So pressing I to pull up the eyedropper, we can select the stroke. Now that it's literally stroked the text, we don't want that. We just wanted the color. So if you hit shift and X, it will flip the current stroke with the current fill. So it gives us a gold fill. This text also defaulted to the last text that I had used, the last font that I'd used, which is Bison. I purchased that from a site called Design Cuts. It was part of a larger package. I believe they sell it individually. This video is not sponsored. Um, but that's just happens to be where I purchased this font from originally. The other thing that also happened by default is it's tracked out a, a large amount. It creates this nice airy feel that I like. If you hit command T on your keyboard, it will pull up your character box and you can see the tracking It's tracked all the way out to 350. So by default, when this was first typed out, it would have looked like that, which is pretty condensed, pretty heavy. Um, for this look, I like the idea of tracking it out a fair bit just creates a different effect, a different, different look. So that's looking cool. I like that. Let's grab the top section of the crest here and holding down option and shift, we're going to drag out a copy and then holding shift, we're going to rotate that around and we're just going to shorten up these paths here with the direct selection tool. You'll notice that a lot of these techniques end up getting repeated. It's the same, same tools. It's the same transformations. It's the same key commands that I use over and over and over again. So when you become comfortable in Illustrator, 
your workflow can become very quick. If you have to go into the menu and click on every tool that you wanna use, it can be quite a bit more tedious, take a lot more time. So by learning these key commands, it will speed you up and it is worth all the time that you spend practicing. So I'm gonna pull up my pen tool again and we're gonna create kind of a radiating line effect in the bottom of the crest right now. So let's create one straight line up to here and then we're going to rotate around this end point. So press R to pull up the rotate tool and then option click on the end point and an angle of 15 degrees looks pretty good to me and hit copy. Then using my favorite key command, command D to transform again, make another version. So it's kind of created this radial effect. It would be even more accentuated if you reduce this angle. So let's try come down to 10 and hit copy. So now you'll get a couple more copies in that space. You get this nice cool radial line effect. Using our direct selection tool again, we're gonna pick up the endpoints. You can do this with the scissor tool or you can do it with the direct selection arrow. Um, you'll see that the line turns pink there and the text at the end comes up and says line extension. That means that this point, this intersection down here is really just shortening the line. It hasn't changed angles or positions at all. It is just shorter and it happens to intersect with the outer section of our crest. So I do this all the time. Sometimes a scissor or a cut is more effective. Both things will achieve the same result, just a different way to get there. So there we go. That's looking cool. Let's pick up all of these and reflect across the center. Hit copy and deselect. So I like the way that that's looking but I wanna add in some text down here at the bottom. So we'll create a copy of this so that's the same size. And uh, we'll just type in the year. To be cool, I'm gonna type it in in Roman numerals. As I'm filming this, it's still 2019. So let's do MMXIX for 2019. By the time you watch this, it'll probably be 2020. And you'll just think that I'm behind on the times. So that's looking cool. I wanna create a box now that holds this. I'm gonna use these outer points as my reference or as the edge of those boxes. And let's, using the pen tool, create a line here. Because my text was filled with the gold, this line wants to be filled as well by default. So I'm gonna use the eyedropper, eye on the keyboard, and select my strokes again. And we're gonna create another one that comes down about here. I'm doing this all just by instinct. I don't have a sketch set up for this. I don't have a template that I'm following. I just thought that uh, I could freestyle it. I should have my cuts be inside the box, not outside the box, because then it will just help my alignment be easier. Cut all of these, and then use my direct selection arrow again to delete the center points. If this text is getting in your way for any reason, you can select it and cut it, Command X, and that leaves it on your clipboard. I'll do this all the time too with elements. I'll just hang on to something on my clipboard Obviously you have to remember that it's there. So this needs to become instinct where it's part of your workflow. I'll do all of the modifications to the stuff that was underneath, for instance. And once I'm finished, I can use paste in front, which is again, one of my favorite key commands to use. I use it all the time in my workflow. So command F to paste in front. And now that object that you had cut and held on your clipboard falls back into the document and the exact same place that you had picked it up from without moving. If I didn't use paste in front, I had it there on my clipboard and I just pasted it, Command V, 
it can come back in at any other point and be just something that you need to move back into place, which for this works, but to be more precise, Command F to paste it in front. So that's looking pretty cool. I like the way this is all feeling. Let's pick up these lines here and these two and then reuse them up top. So I held down Option and Shift to create copies. I'm gonna hold down Shift and rotate that. And then I'm gonna align it to that top point. Now up here, let's, uh, well maybe I didn't need those outer ones. Let's create a path that comes across there. Like I said, I'm gonna delete these. That was an accident, didn't need them. go it's looking good lorem ipsum and up here we could just do a shorter word on the top of an anvil just ipsum and then you could pick up these paths if you wanted and carry that line down just the eyedropper again to box these elements in Maybe make that text a little bit smaller. The other thing here is if you don't like something, don't be afraid to don't be afraid to undo it. Command Z. There's no harm in trying out an element, and then if it doesn't work, going back and and removing it. So now I'm gonna create hammers that are gonna extend out the side of the crest here. So just using the rectangle tool again and selecting the same stroke. Picking up the endpoints with the direct selection, rounding those off. Okay, so I'm gonna create a rectangle at the end of the hammer. And then I'm gonna create a second rectangle that aligns up here like this. You can see that it's the same width. Then using the direct selection arrow, I'm gonna pick up just the two endpoints of that hammer. And I'm gonna go object transform scale. And I'm gonna scale that down to about 45% of the original size. It creates a nice point. But you'll see because those two paths are separate, there's this weird little intersection of the strokes going on. Let's pick up both of these shapes with the regular move tool and using the pathfinder again, we're going to unite them. That looks cool. Let's pick up these points and round them off. Same thing with the handle, the other edge of the head there. Let's slide that down the handle. That's a good looking hammer, I like that. I'm gonna make sure that the outer edge of my handle or hammer head is aligned. You saw the pink line that popped up there. It's now aligned with the outer edge of the crest. That alignment from one element to another is kind of neat. Makes things look more um, controlled, not so chaotic. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna cut this outer section of the crest. We're gonna delete, oh not the handle, we're just gonna delete these two lines and then we're gonna align these points to the outer edge of the handle. Now we're gonna pick up the hammer on this side and we're gonna reflect it across the center, create a copy and repeat the same cut and alignment on this side. Just like that. And there you have it. It's a pretty cool looking badge or crest, whatever you want to call it. I'm quite happy with it. You can add as many details as you want or keep it as simple as you want. I think in my original example, I also created kind of caps, something along these lines. Let's try to match the angle. Actually, you know what? Let's literally match the angle of the original hexagon by dragging out a copy of that, scaling it down to a point that we like, and then aligning the ends. That's a lot easier in this case than eyeballing it and having it potentially be off. I like that element on the top. Let's duplicate it on the bottom 
So just drag out a copy, rotate it around, and then align it to the outer edge here. You can see a lot of this stuff, there's no, I didn't have a plan going in, just kind of winged it. Got it to a point that I was happy with it and called it a day. Okay, and then here's one final thing to consider when you're finishing up this file. So right now everything looks good, but if you hit Command Y to go into preview mode, you'll see that it's just a series of strokes, the text isn't outlined, and this file isn't really ideal for you to send out to a client or for production. So if you wanted to have it embroidered, for instance, this wouldn't work for you. So to finish things up, hit Command A to select everything, Command Shift O will outline your text, or you can go to type, um, create outlines, and then object, path, outline stroke will create outlines from all of the strokes within your document. And again, you'll see that this is not ideal because now there's a bunch of overlap and everything looks kind of messy. But with everything still selected, you can use the Unite option once again and it just creates a nice clean finished version of your of your crest with all of the paths outlined, all of your text outlined. And this is looking really sharp. Command Y and you'll see visually nothing changed. All you were doing is just finalizing the design. One last thing I'll give you guys is this other trick that I've done a lot is you create your final version and you can create a secondary version where you use the compound or release the compound path and use the fills instead of the strokes. So to see what I mean by that, we'll go with this selected object, compound path, release. And then if you select the outermost path, the, the widest point on your design and hit delete twice, you'll see that the fills were revealed. In a couple situ situations like this where there is a compound nature, whether it's dots or other graphic elements, you may have to go back in and manually adjust. So to show you that, let's figure this out. So we're going to Command Y for outline mode. And with the selection thing, first of all, we're gonna ungroup everything. So we've selected it with the selection tool. Command Shift G a couple times will ungroup everything. And then you can pick up these letters here. And none of these are compound letters, so that's good. So with them all selected, we were holding down shift to select the multiple letters. We're going to bring this to the front. So that's command shift square bracket on the right, which brings it to the top of the layer order. Then we're gonna to add to the selection, so shift, and we're gonna pick up this shape that was now in the background. And we're gonna use the minus front option. So all of these shapes that we have selected from the front will now be deleted from this back path. And if you hit Command Y, you can see what that's done. That's exactly what we wanted. Now for here, for this middle section, the lorem ipsum text, there were a couple of these paths that were compound letters. So if you just select all of the letters, bring everything to the front and repeat the process that we did beneath, you'll see that those center paths are not actually cut out from the base and they have disappeared. And that's because the outer section of the path actually deleted that middle section. So it just means that, I've undone that there, you need to be more careful with your selection. So these center elements you can deselect, again holding down shift, and then now if we repeat that process and subtract, these center paths stay. So it's just an interesting take, something else that you can do with this effect where you've created the monoline badge first and then you get the filled version after as a nice alternate. Okay, so there's our finished badge. I mentioned while I was making this about using a template image. So what you would do in that situation, instead of building it just freestyle like I did, is if you have something sketched out, take a photo of it or scan it, and inside of your document, set up a new layer. 
I'm going to delete this because I don't need it. So I have, have two layers, one that you're going to work on and one that your template image is going to be set up on. And with Command Shift P, you can place an image. You can also find this same function up here in File, Place. Navigate to your project structure or wherever the image is, select it, and then hit Place. If you click, it's going to come in full size. If you click and drag, you'll get the option of selecting what size you want to place it in as. This transformation is automatically scaled proportionately. So you can set up a template sketch like this. This is really rough. Don't mind my uh, poor drawing skills. I didn't actually use this when I created the drawing. I did this after the fact, just for this demonstration. So now this image is on this layer. If you start working on this layer on top to build your document, you can do something like this. And then when you hit Command Y to go into outline mode, your image disappears and that defeats the purpose. You want to be able to work in outline mode on top of an image without just seeing the bounding box. So let's go back to regular preview mode. And the trick here is to double click on this layer and check off template which will automatically lock and dim the image to 50%. 50% works in most cases. If you need it to be uh, more opaque, you can adjust that accordingly. Hit OK. You'll now see that when you hit Command Y to go into outline mode, the image stays where it is and your text is no longer previewing with its fills and strokes. You are in outline mode so you can work on top here and still see where everything is lining up underneath. Obviously, when you go to send this file out, whether it's to a client or for printing, you can just delete that template. But it's good to know how to do that if you wanted to sketch your crest in the first place. Another thing, another note that I'll make here, this is the document that I built all of these crests in. You'll see that I have multiple artboards set up. So in your artboard panel, you can create new artboards, and then you can control the arrangement of them down here um, into rearrange all artboards, and you can select whether you want it to be in a grid or a line, the number of rows and the spacing between them. And the reason I do this is that it allows me to keep everything neatly organized together in one document. All of my original illustrations and starting points I can keep on one artboard, and then I can build my crests in another one. And then that way, if I'm cutting an element, I have the original still stored somewhere else close by. The other thing for this particular style that is helpful, when you build these elements all together in the same document, it just allows you to see whether your scale and treatment is staying consistent from one piece to another. If you tried building these all separately at different sizes, they may not be as cohesive as a set, but then by building them together, they start to look very similar. So there you have it. If you made it this far, I'm hoping that you found the video useful and you're going to be able to add a bunch of stuff from here to your skill set. Um, I'd really appreciate it if you do all those things that YouTubers ask for, which are uh, to leave a comment down below, to subscribe to the channel, and to give this video a thumbs up. The support really means a lot. I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully you'll join me in the next video that I have planned. I don't know what it is at this point, so it's pretty vague, but what can you do? See you in the next one. Perfect.